4.1 Introduction According to the World Development Report 2010, a large proportion of India's population lives below the poverty line. To reduce the extent of poverty, Indian government has made a provision to supply essential goods at a reasonable price to them. Four point two Public Distribution System PDS Meaning and Explanation It is a food security system launched by the Government of India. Through this system, food items like wheat, rice, sugar, etc. as well as non-food items like clothes, kerosene, etc. are distributed at subsidized rates among the needy people in India. Thus many fair price shops are established in several states across the country. Both the central and state government share the responsibility of regulating the public distribution system. The central government is responsible for storage, transportation and allocation of food grains whereas state government holds the responsibility of distributing the food grains to the consumers through fair price shops. State government are responsible for operational activities like Identification of families below the poverty line, allotment of ration cards, supervision of functioning of fair price shops, etc. 4.3 Objectives of Public Distribution System There are two main objectives of public distribution system. One, to provide essential goods to the consumers at reasonable and subsidized price. 2. To maintain minimum nutritional status of the population. Thus public distribution system helps to put an indirect check on the open market prices of essential goods. 4.4 Progress of Public Distribution System Public Distribution System has come into existence soon after the Bengal Famine in 1943. Through this system, a network of fair price shops is established to distribute food grains in the country. In India, the number of fair price shops was nearly 47,000 in 1960, it increased from 4.58 lakhs in 1999 to 4.74 lakhs in 2002 and 4.99 lakhs in 2011. The offtake from public distribution system was nearly 19 million tons of food grains in 1991 to 92, but recently it has declined. It is because the difference between the open market prices of wheat and rice and price determined by public distribution system is reduced. 4.5 Drawbacks of Public Distribution System 1. Limited Benefits to the Poor under PDS, food grains are provided to ration card holders only. These ration cards are issued on the basis of residential address. So seasonal migrant workers and homeless people are not able to get its benefits. 2. Regional disparities Some regions are well developed while some are less developed. In some states, large number of families are below poverty line. But the offtake of food grain through PDS is not accordingly.
Due to this regional imbalance, most of the people are deprived from the benefits of PDS. 3. Urban Bias Nearly 75% fair price shops are in the rural areas, but the offtake of food grains through PDS is more in urban areas. The transport system in villages is not as efficient as in cities. Due to this at times, food grains, kerosene, etc. are not available in most of the fair price shops in rural areas. 4. Inefficiency of Food Corporation of India It is the duty of Food Corporation of India to supply food grains for distribution through fair price shops. But there are some inefficiencies. Excess stock of food grains is not stored properly. Therefore, it creates scarcity of food grains even after an increase in production. There is a pressing need to eliminate these drawbacks. Four point six remedial measures. One food bank. It is essential to establish food banks and to modernize go downs in every state so that food grain can be properly stored. Two Extension of the coverage of PDS. The coverage of PDS has to be extended so that no needy person will be deprived from the benefits of PDS. 3. Restructuring of PDS. It is necessary to check various malpractices in PDS. Rationing officers must visit fair price shops frequently to know their problems. It is necessary to eliminate bogus ration cards by rates of flying squads. Cost of handling goods and transport cost has to be reduced. 4.7 Consumer Protection A person who uses or consumes goods and services is called as a consumer. A consumer is defined as a person who acquires goods and services for direct use or ownership. If the consumer acquires goods for resale, then he is not considered to be a consumer. The consumer derives satisfaction from consumption of goods and services, but sometimes they are not satisfied due to malpractices followed by the seller. A. Sale of adulterated goods B. Sale of defective goods C. Using false weights and measures D. Holding and black marketing E. Charging more than maximum retail price F. Misleading advertisements The consumers have to be protected from the loss caused on account of defective goods and unsatisfactory services. Consumer protection is a legal provision to ensure the rights of the consumer. Rights and duties of a consumer In India, the Consumer Protection Act was passed in the year 1986 and it came into force from 1st July 1987. Food Adulteration It is a process by which substandard substances are added to food items by which its quantity increases but its quality decreases is called food adulteration. Some adulterants are visible like stones, leaves, soil, etc. Consumers can remove them whereas some adulterants are invisible, for example, milk adulterated with water or chemicals, pulses adulterated by artificial colors, etc., 
they are very harmful as they cannot be removed easily. They may lead to serious health problems like cancer, paralysis, diseases of skin and eyes or even death. Food adulteration adversely affects the health of the society. It is a serious social crime. Therefore, it is a moral responsibility of all of us to restrict food adulteration for healthy and strong India. Right to Seek Redressal Consumers have the right to seek redressal of their grievances related to price and quality of goods and services. If required, the product must be repaired or replaced by the seller or manufacturer. The consumer's redressal agencies include the district forum, the state commission and the national commission. The Supreme Court is the final court of appeal and verdict. Right to consumer education. The consumers must know about the relevant laws to prevent unfair trade practices and to follow the procedure while making complaint. Right to clean environment. Everyone has the right to enjoy a pollution-free environment. If anybody creates pollution by means of garbage, air, water, noise, etc., a consumer has the right to lodge a complaint and to seek its redressal. Main Objectives of Consumer Protection Act 1. Providing better and all-round protection to consumers. 2. Making provisions for a simple and speedy machinery for redressal of consumers' grievances. It provides a statutory recognition to the following rights of consumers. Rights to safety. The consumer should be protected against goods and services which are hazardous to health. For example, protection from defective vehicles, inferior electrical appliances, harmful pesticides, etc. Right to be informed. The consumer must be provided with accurate information about quality, purity, price, quantity and the standard of goods and services. Right to choose. Consumers have the right to make a choice from variety of goods and services as per their purchasing power and preferences. Right to be heard. Consumers have the right to be heard by manufacturers and dealers about their opinions on production. Duties of a consumer Be quality conscious and aware of rights to restrict business malpractices. Beware of misleading advertisements. Insist the seller to give a bill, receipt and guarantee card. Compare the quality, price, durability, after sales services, etc. of the product. Carefully inspect variety of goods and make the best choice. In India, 24 December is the National Consumers Day, while 15th March is World Consumers Day. Lok Adalat is an effective source of rapid redressal in our country. Consumers' protection is a social responsibility. So various consumer organizations are actively functioning worldwide. Targeted Public Distribution System Since June 1997, 
a dual pricing structure was introduced under targeted public distribution system. Accordingly, the target was to distribute food grains at reasonable prices to the needy families above poverty line at a very low price to the families below poverty line. A ration card is essential to obtain food grains through public distribution system. It has the information of number of family members and accordingly food grains are supplied through particular fair price shop. The government of Maharashtra provides a ration card of a particular color as per the economic status. Generally, white ration card is given to those families whose annual income is more than rupees 1 lakh. They are excluded from the benefits of public distribution system due to high economic status. An orange ration card is provided to those families whose annual income is between 25,000 to 1 lakh. They get 5 kg rice, 5 kg wheat and 2 litre kerosene per month at lower rates than the market price. Families below poverty line have yellow ration card. They get 25 kg rice and 10 kg wheat every month at a subsidized rate. Under Antayodhya scheme, very poor people are provided with food grain at the lowest price. Under Niradhar Yojanas, senior citizens below poverty line are provided 10 kg rice free per month through PDS.